Breaking news, coming at you out of Ewa Park as Blackburn Rovers and John Dahl Thomason look set to go their separate ways uh, after what has been a, a week of turmoil, a week of chaos, perhaps, uh, 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 over at uh, the Blue and White HQ, that's right. It's been, it's been, you know, I think, I think if we could have bottled this past week into a Netflix documentary, we'd have a surefire hit on our hands. Uh, so JDT, a coach that's been with us for about 18 months, uh, and, and of course the uh, former Premier League winners, Blackburn Rovers, of course, will go up their separate ways. I think the announcement is probably expected today, something like that. And uh, I think we're going to be, I think there's also a strong candidate in the frame to come in uh, to take over the race. We'll talk about that in probably another video, but uh, let's just talk about the shenanigans that has been this past week and what's led to this uh, to this disgraceful um, position that we find ourselves in. Of course, um, I, I think I think the the main catalyst for this current situation with John Dahl Thomason leaving is you could say the the form has uh, has has made it. A glaringly obvious decision from a third party point of view, from from somebody outside the fan base. You look at the form, you think, yes, uh, the, that that club's in free fall right now. They need to they need to change a manager. And I did say this to somebody yesterday. If if I think it was is actually Pete, uh, Philly Pete. I said to him, um, you know, if if John Dahl Thomason was called Mister Smith. Uh, and he wasn't who he was, and and of course you look at his record, and you and and you just take it from what it is. That is a sackable bit of form. Now, of course, JDT is not being sacked, uh, because that would cost Venkis money, and that's a story for another story for another day. The 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 complete shenanigans that is the hierarchy, and and, and we might we might do, uh, delve into that in another video. But um, but what we are focusing on on John Dahl Thomason and and the head coach position at Blackburn Rovers. The form is shocking. Uh, I did bring my I raised a couple of eyebrows about. Week or two ago, before before the, the the shock loss in our in my eyes, the shock loss against QPR. No disrespect to QPR, but we we usually we typically beat them at home, and and I was even despite the form, I, and of course despite the loss of Adam Morton, despite the Duncan Maguire shit that's going on and behind the scenes, which I also think is going to rear its ugly head today. Uh, um, uh, Despite all that, I, I still expected to, to beat QPR because it's what we do at home. Uh, so when that defeat came in, that that felt like a significant uh, 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 piece of the pie here. And of course, and and it's and it's also quite frustrating that this situation has happened or is happening right now on a Thursday, and not something that would happen on a Monday. I felt if there was going to be a decision. Um, following on from the shenanigans of the transfer window and the conclusion of the transfer window, I think I thought JDT would have left uh, on Monday. Early doors give us the rest of the week to figure it out and, and of course, get that replacement in. But let's turn the clock back, of course, to prior to the, the game against QPR. There was the transfer window. We were active, not necessarily bringing in the players us fans wanted, but some experience none the same. Uh, we brought in uh, John Fleck. Uh, I'm, I'm happy about that. Don't know uh, how much involvement he will have in the, in the end of the, of the season. We brought in Carl McFazian as well, experienced centre-back, and we brought in a, a couple of loans as well, uh, in my understanding. So we brought in some players, but of course the main the main target was Duncan Maguire forward that could have been uh, our striker for the foreseeable future uh, and, and was expected to be done on a permanent deal in the long term. Maybe a loan to, 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 to a permanent deal, but... That mess is is still going on, and it looks like it's gonna gonna go uh, the the wrong way for us. But anyway, that deal kind of looked like it was done. We we even got pictures of him holding the shirt and everything, and we even got an announcement on Twitter that he was signed as a Rovers man. But the room of the the sort of um, the the following on the follow on from that uh, revealed that no, it's not actually done. There was some crazy you would not believe stupidity going on in the hierarchy in the administration side of things for rovers and of course this is not the first time this is the second this is actually the third time in two years or in fact the third time in the space of around about 12 months you would you, you can imagine and that of course hopefully will have, a, have its own uh, um, uh, domino effect up the ladder but so Duncan Maguire it looks like doesn't sign for Rovers, especially not now. And again, that's not, not that's about 99% true. Uh, we will get that final 1%, I believe, today once the appeal process from the EFL, which never goes through, gets uh, resolved. Um, but uh, anyway, regardless, 
Because of that uh, ongoing disaster, JDT was instructed you will not talk to the press prior to the QPR game, which, of course, is never good because we know, or well, I think now when we can, we can feed, feed, uh, fill in the blanks, uh, we, can, we can now suggest that JDT was angry at the scenario that was brewing behind him with the Duncan Maguire uh, thing and it could have, could, have, um, could have caused a right old rat's nest. So it was kind of like a damage limitation move by the club to stop JDT going in front of the cameras and revealing what was going on uh, and again was still denied the opportunity to talk uh, really about the situation following on from the defeat against uh, QPR so it appeared that uh, that window or the conclusion of the window and the ramifications from that window has led to this decision of course this is from the from from a fan base point of view from from those not those from working in but but when you when you when you look at it from an outsider you know if you're if you're a, a Bristol City fan or if you're a, a Southampton fan or whatever you just look at the form you think yep it's him that's why he's got to go but I think I believe it, it's a combination of of factors uh, you know I I know Joe JDT John Dal Thomas is rated highly um, within the club I think the fans think he's a good manager I think he's 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 uh, he will. Uh, you know, take this bump in, in his managerial career and go with it. He's got a, definitely a forward, uh, a progressive sort of football mind, one for the future. Play, He wants his team to play attractive football, entertaining football. And that was what we got last year. And that's what we got in parts this year. But those results... Uh, have, have have dried up, and of course we find ourselves in this really ridiculous kind of form. So the third party, for, or the outside point of view, would see the form and say, "Yep, it's time to go." But I, the uh, my understanding is, um, there are a lot of internal factors, specifically the summer uh, was a major bearing in the decision for John to himself to remove himself from this position. He of course was brought in under the under the guise of a project, uh, was expecting uh, finances to to strengthen the side to to play the way he wants. Um, but of course, those goalposts were moved by the, the the owners with a lot of financial mess going on behind the scenes, which I don't really want to dig into because it's it's complicated and I don't even fully understand. But it's it's a mess. So he then offered his uh, his uh, resignation in the summer. That's what has been led to believe in the sources out there that uh, that 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 um, you know if you don't want to continue. The project i will happily step away without charge so he offered his, his resignation uh in the summer but the, the owners or the board or whatever decided to stick stick to it nope there's no pressure on succeeding this year which i was i've regurgitated those lines you know even though we dripped down the table that we're playing a certain way we're sticking to the project we know that this was meant to be a season of survival or at least a season of uh just um you know just to kind of tread water to, to, to a point um but slowly but surely the the form never got back uh, and then of course now the internal disgustingness that is the mess of the administration side of Rovers has made it uh, uh, a workplace that's that's quite uh, difficult to work with so again JDT not getting sacked JDT not quitting but kind of it will be a mutual separation and of course, we will be on the lookout for a new coach. Now, there is one main name in in the frame here, and of course, I I will reveal that probably in another video following on from this one. But um, but uh, it is it is comes at a heavy heart because you know, yep, we had Mowbray for five years, and and he did steady the ship, and and of course, we had a, a roller coaster ride with Mowbray. But this the, the first season, the initial season with JDT was 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 pretty much the most successful we've ever had. Uh, it, since our relegation from the Premier League, we were in the seventh spot, just outside the players on goal difference, and of course, uh, and now we find ourselves languishing. What it's, I don't know, I don't, even, I don't even want to look at the table at the moment because it's that grim. So on paper, and of course for morale, and, and of course just to stop the rot, uh, I believe football-wise, business-wise, it is the right call. I know JDT will get a, a great opportunity, and it probably won't 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 take long for that to come come around. It looks like the Swedish job is is his for the offering as well. But uh, I will not be surprised to uh, to see him return to England in one shape or form. Uh, the, the coach of a Premier League club, I think he leaves. He will leave with his stock held high. Uh, it's just unfortunate that we will not get to see him duke uh, fists up against his old Premier League playing club Newcastle in the FA Cup. So that's a little bit bittersweet for me. But that is it, guys. That's a, of course my uh, feeling right now. This Monday, uh, Thursday morning at five fifty something a.m. as we look. For, uh, into the future, hopefully. Of course, the circus still remains. And I know there might be some dominoes uh, misplaced further up in the, uh, the hierarchical ladder at Rovers, whether it is the club secretary, whether it is uh, 
uh, Greg Braun because I've not heard anything out of him uh, at the moment. But uh, JDT looks set to part ways. But uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions about John Dahl Thomason's uh, imminent uh, departure from Ewood Park. And of course, who would you like to see uh, pulling the strings at Ewood uh, uh, for, the, for the future? And of course, will that person be in charge Come Saturday, it will be fantastic if we can get a turnaround within the, within the hour or hours or in, the, in the, the closing days. He might uh, be in the touch lines uh, come Saturday, but probably not in the dugout. But anyway, that's it. Subscribe. Catch you later. Still, the madness continues. <laughs>